Can Tensor gain? I thought the answer was no. Everyone, Barry Johnson of Engineer Reacts. Time to react. All right, so this video was actually requested by the community. And I'm just gonna say this right now. This is gonna have to be a series of videos. And ironically, another creator contacted me about collaborating on gaming to see what CPUs can do right now in the Android space. And I intend to do that here. So in this video, we're gonna talk about cloud gaming and Pixel 6 series. We're gonna talk about standard gaming and also the high performance mode or the optimization mode for Tensor. Now, one thing I will point out is in the standard mode, we're actually going to shift over the course of the year. So I want to evaluate S22 Ultra. So basically Tensor versus 8th Gen 1 processors versus 888s versus 870s. And that way we get a good clear picture of what these CPUs are doing. Are they all good on paper or are they just fluff? Now I will say Google pumped the brakes and immediately said, this is not a benchmarking chip. This chip is more for doing stuff like making reservations through the Google Assistant and not picking up the phone. So that's kind of where they kind of position this, that this has all the true pixel functionality with an improved camera system. However, what I've noticed is cloud gaming has worked very well. So some of the clips in the background are just some games that are Stadia games you can run 4K 60. So if you recall when Stadia first came out, they released Cyberpunk and they actually had less issues with Cyberpunk than Xbox and also the PS4. So what does that mean? Currently today, the Pixel 6 series has no issues. There's no overheating issues running cloud-based gaming, whether you use Stadia or if you use Box Game Pass. But I will say that one of the benchmarks that there's kind of pushback from, but I want to keep it as a benchmark, I always play Jensen Impact. I know that's a PC-based game that happens to run on Android. However, it's a awesome game and I'm looking for a setup without any tweaks that can run at 60 frames per second. So it's almost like the proverbial can it run crisis. Now let's, since we've talked about all this stuff, I want to jump into the game like I'm actually a gamer. So let's turn to the game and this is me playing a game by the name of Guilt. So this is Stadia running 4K60 and I'm doing screen recording. So even though it looks like I'm playing it on a big screen television, so I'm actually using a screen recording. So this story is about a young girl who loses her cousin after looking for her cousin. Something has changed in her environment and then she notices that her cousin appear to be at school. So her whole thing in this particular adventure is to find her cousin and reunite with her. But as time goes on, she learns that the world is different than what she had expected. And I have to say, it runs extremely smoothly. I played on Pixel 6. I played Cyberpunk. I played PUBG. So this is an example of Jensen Impact. Jensen Impact, again, is, is unbelievable. But Look when I'm doing screen recording on Genshin Impact, the actual frames per second. It's always dipping beneath 60. Sometimes it gets down to the mid 30s, it stays in the 40s a lot. Sometimes we'll get to the 50s, but it's not a constant 60 frames per second. So what I want to kind of focus on in this series is where we can get the maximum for this game. It's a it's an extremely tough game, but I'm hoping by the time next year comes around, we'll have found a phone that will be able to run this without issue. So the final game I wanted to talk about also talks about the new mode, so the optimization mode. So if you look on the web, there are games that are optimized for Pixel 6. And again, the community wanted me to look at this, and I want to say and report this is full transparency Right now, the games that say they're optimized just happen to run at full speed. They have not been optimized. So what I mean by this, the game that I'm playing now is called Standoff 2. I'm actually playing a version called Mad Santa. So in this game, right now on the screen, you see 60 frames per second, and that's because I, it dips when you do a screen recording. And this was the only game that I noticed such a severe dip. But when you optimize the game, you can actually get it to play at 120 frames per second at full detail, settings all set to high. If we look at the menu system, you can select whether you have your frame per second counter, you can have do not disturb, screenshot, 
You can also check your performance mode. So if you want to optimize for performance, if you want to optimize for battery or what have you, have those options. So that's one cool thing. But I will say underneath the hood, outside of those features, you don't get optimizations yet. They're, in my opinion, just picking games that happen to run very well on Tensor, and they haven't taken games like Jinchen and optimized that yet. Mad Santa is set up to where you're running, you're usually pitted between four and five people in a small area, so they're really, it's really hard to camp. And what happens is one of you, at some point, will become Santa, and Santa is almost impossible to kill, but there's things that you can do. One of the things that you try to do is get get his hat. But I will say, in this game, if someone is staring at you too long, you shoot them. Now, what I mean by this is this. Santa is obviously overloaded. However, the objective is to win or get as high as you can to number one. And one of the things that you'll start to see is when Santa doesn't appear for a while, time's running out, people start to look at you weird, and next thing you know, they're shooting at you. So. Here I am fighting against Santa and everything is good. This was a quick and easy video. So I was the engineer. This is me dying. So with this, I'm out.